today we will learn about the bonding. Eh? We have learned about the atom, we have learned about the periodic table trend, and today we learn about the bonding. Eh? So uh, if you look there, I don't know if you can see or not, but that's bonding. We know before that uh, there are two types of bonding, primary and also secondary. Primary bonding is covalent, ionic, and also the metallic. While the what we call the uh, secondary bonding is one the ones. Okay? The primary bonding happens because the valence electron move out, move out or doing something. Okay? There are something happen. So that's why we call primary bonding also a chemical bonding. One of the uh, examples of primary bonding is ionic bond. So today we will go one by one. Lah. So ionic bond. Ionic bond form when valence electron. So the keyword here is valence electron. Remember, when you have the atom, what moving is whatever outside. The electron inside the shell, the, the what we call the lower subshell, doesn't really involve in everyday uh, reaction. So only the valence electron move. Okay. So ionic bond happen when valence electron are transferred from one atom to the other to complete the outer valence shell. The reason for this is the reason why atomic bonding lah. They want to fulfill the octet rule, which we already cover in last class lah. So as you can see here, you have the sodium uh, atom. Sodium atom have 281, 281 electronic configuration, meaning that they have what we call the extra uh, valence electron there, one only, and then you have chlorine here. So the chlorine have seven valence electrons. So you can see here, uh, sodium only need uh, what we call remove this one electron to get octet, while the chlorine need accepting one electron in order to fulfill the octet. So the best way they can achieve this is just to transfer the uh, sodium, transfer the electron to the chlorine. So you can see the sodium is happy, chlorine also happy. Both are in octet. But remember, when you are moving electron out from any atom or receiving any electron from other atom, you become ion. The atom become ion. That's why when you go out, there are deficiency of what we call the ion, uh, the electron here. So sodium become the cation. So this is basically, uh, uh, become ionic species lah. So normally when you have deficiency, you put plus. Okay. When you have extra, chlorine normally have only seven valence electron, but now you have octet. So this chlorine is not normal lah. So we call it ion lah. So chlorine have the extra. Electron, so now the chlorine uh, is negatively charged. Lah. So it's ionic species. Lah. So because of this ionic species, opposite charge attract. That's why they combine. Okay, so that, but there are no overlapping of orbital. They just combine like a magnet. Okay, magnet, two magnet, south and pole, uh, south and north, just combine like that. That's why they make a bond. So the bond is sort of like just electrostatic attraction. So, in the salt or whatever, in ionic salt, so you can see here, this is what we call the sodium and this is chlorine. Why I draw this bigger than this? Because of course chlorine is bigger. If you look here, chlorine have one, two, three, three orbitals. So it's much bigger than the uh, sodium here. Sodium now is left with the two orbitals. So that's why the chlorine is bigger. So in the solid, in the ionic solid, ionic salt normally we call it, uh, the, the configuration is more like, like this. So they are not overlapping, they just attracted. So sodium attracted to chlorine, chlorine attracted to sodium, and so on. So you get the salt here. So that is ionic bond. Okay, so they just attracted by electrostatic attraction. Okay, so typically form between metal and non metal. If you look any ionic bond, they're always metal and non metal. Metal and non-metal, for example, magnesium chloride, sodium chloride, they must be metal and, uh, because if you look here, let me make it bigger a little bit. How to make bigger? So this one. Eh? Okay. So if you look here, the metal part is here. This is the metal part. So you can see um, this metal, uh, the ionic bond, if you look, uh, uh, where is the thing? Okay. So if you look here, Metal and non-metal at extremities, meaning that the far away. Okay, extremity meaning that one at the hujung sana, this is at another end lah. So if you look here, you can get the ionic salt by lithium chloride, lithium uh, sodium chloride, the potassium chloride, potassium bromide, whatever lah. So normally, in this extremity, so this is column number one, and the last one. 
So basically, that's uh, between metal and non-metal, between metal and non-metal. So that's where you can uh, sort of like uh, find the solid that is ionic in character. Lah. Okay, so that the example is sodium chloride, lah, this one. Okay, the, the reason why is because if you look here, there are only one to remove, one to accept. So it's much easier to throw and to accept. Okay, and next, yes? We draw the ionic compound, should we draw the dose? No, no, yeah. I want to show that some, somebody, uh, something like uh, remove. Lah. Okay, so normally the most important thing when you want to draw ionic compound, this thing. This is the most important. This thing, you can even show the valence electron only. But the most important thing when you draw a compound is this, the charge, okay? The charge, okay? So that's the important thing. <coughs> okay, so ionic compound, typically brittle, uh, high bonding energy. This electrostatic attraction is pretty strong, eh? Pretty strong. Okay, so the question now, this is not bonding smart, eh? Because I need to speed up. Why salt dissolve in water? If you think about it, salt, Let's say this, I said before, the bonding, the electrostatic bonding is pretty strong. But then, water, later on we will learn about water, water, between water molecule, if you see water molecule, you have this oxygen, and then you have uh, hydrogen, and then you have another water molecule, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this thing, between this hydrogen and oxygen, they are wonder wall, lah, wonder wall. Wonder walls, we will learn uh, later lah. Or uh, in this case, particular case, we call it hydrogen bond. Lah. So this hydrogen bond is lesser in terms of strength, is less strong than the, this ionic bond. But the question now, why when you put salt in the water, then this is break up, bring, uh, how word, broken. Even though this is stronger than this thing. Because remember, when you are putting thing in water, it's not like this thing will be broken. Lah. The one thing, the thing, uh, the bond that is broken is this, the not permanent bond lah, like this one, the wall bond between this, and then you have another OH here, and then the OH, and then this would make the what we call the bond here. So this is the one that responsible to break this thing. But the question why? Why you can break this strong ionic bond using this weak uh, one the wall uh, or hydrogen bond in this particular case lah? The reason for that, okay, the reason for that, as ionic bond, yes, uh, the answer, ionic bond in sodium chloride is stronger than hydrogen bond, yes. Water is polar, but the reason why the water can dissolve, uh, the water can dissolve salt is because of this hydration, eh? hydration. What does it mean by hydration or solvation? Is basically, you look here, eh? this is crystal of salt, okay, your table salt. When you have, like what we call, the salt inside, there are many water molecules, even though they are like less stronger than uh, what we call than the ionic bond, but there are many things sort of like attacking or surrounding this uh, individual uh, ion, individual ion inside this thing. So we call it the solvation. It's like one, two, three, four, five, eight, eight water attacking one uh, ionic thing. So you can see here the sum of the weak interaction, dipole, dipole. Okay, dipole, dipole here is just basically. Uh, here, polar, different polarity. We will talk later on in the secondary bonding later on. The sum of the weak interaction, in this case, the hydrogen bond, is more than the one strong interaction. So you have like a, a group there conspire to break up this uh, strong ionic bond. So that's why lah, ionic compound dissolve in water because water molecule hydrates the ion. Hydrates mean that they sort of like surrounding, making like a bubble, uh, Surrounding the nila, the salt. So that is the ionic bond. Any question in this ionic bond? We're done with the ionic bond. Okay, the most important thing, this charge, huh? This charge. Let's say you have magnesium, huh? If you have magnesium, the charge is different, huh? If you have magnesium chloride, if you have magnesium chloride, you need to understand magnesium is what? Magnesium is number two, huh? This is column number two, meaning that if you look the uh, valence electron, the magnesium has, if I go up, how to go up? What is the thing? What is the thing? Uh, no. If you see magnesium, you can see magnesium has two valence electrons there. So meaning then, when the magnesium de-associate in water, you get magnesium 
2 plus ah. Okay, magnesium 2 plus and the chlorine negative like that. Okay. Okay. Magnesium 2 plus because why? Because the this uh, the two uh, not not magnesium chloride mana dia? Magnesium magnesium uh, magnesium sulfate or whatever lah. Okay. So that's the thing lah. Magnesium chloride so mini uh, chloride kan lah. Magnesium chloride 2. Huh. Okay, magnesium chloride 2. Why magnesium chloride 2? It's because you have magnesium. Let's say I draw just uh, the valence electron. You have two, two valence electron, and then you have chloride. Chloride only have one valence electron. So if you give, if the magnesium give to this guy, okay, and um, um, chlorine have seven, uh, seven. So if let's say magnesium give to chlorine, then magnesium still have one more. So that's why there are another chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7 and then this goes here. So that's why the ionic compound is magnesium chloride 2. Okay? And when they, they associate in water, it become magnesium become magnesium uh, 2 plus and then chloride minus lah. Okay? Minus. So basically there are more chloride lah inside the water than magnesium. Okay, so that's how you need to make sure also the valence electron. The valence electron, the concept of valence electron is the most important lah in the ionic bond. Okay. Okay, done. We go here. Now, we go to covalent bond. Okay, the covalent bond is the most important covalent uh, bond that you will, uh, uh, what you call, encounter again and again in this chemical engineering course lah. Because organic chemistry is all about covalent bond eh. So covalent bond is formed when the valence electron, still you see valence, huh? from one atom are shared. So now they are not giving or not stealing, they are shared together between two or more particular atom. Lah. Example, chlorine gas, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, and methane. Okay? By now you should know the name for all these things because you take organic chemistry. Huh? Okay, even though if you look here, chlorine, oxygen, and nitrogen gas, it's diatomic, meaning that there are two chlorine atoms, there are two oxygen atoms, there are two nitrogen atoms. That's what does it mean by two here. But the bonding, the covalent bonding will be different. Because if you look here, the chlorine, chlorine, eh? chlorine have uh, seven valence electron. The another chlorine have seven valence electron. So in order for this chlorine to make a bond uh, together between each, the same species, they, need, they cannot uh, transfer they need to share because when you share, you see uh, this the blue chlorine have eight now one two three four five six seven eight the same thing for the other chlorine lah. So here, if you look in this uh, skeletal what you call the skeletal uh, notation, you have this single bond lah because you can just uh, this just share just like that. But if you look for the oxygen lah, oxygen, oxygen. If you look the valence electron for oxygen is six one two. 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6. So 6 need another 2. Okay? So that's why when they combine together, they are not just sharing one electron. They are sharing two electrons together. So now you can calculate this O, the blue O, have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? Because sharing means that this also included in the valence for the new O, O2 here. So that's why they are double bond. Similar to the nitrogen, so nitrogen gas, even though there are two nitrogen only, but if, uh, remember, nitrogen have one, two, three, four, five. Five valence electron. So you need to, short of light, in order to share, they need to share not only one, not only two, but even three. Okay, only then you can calculate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's what that rule is satisfied. So this thing is important, that's why I said, the valence electron, for example, let's say you see carbon, Okay, so you see carbon, carbon have four valence electron, nitrogen have five, and then oxygen have six. All these things, the different in valence electron, cause different uh, bonding lah, and not the same bonding, the sharing of the uh, orbital, which is covalent bond, but the way how they bond, bond, single bonds, double bond, triple bond, and so on. Because uh, most students they well. Many of us, I mean, when we see C2, Cl2, chlorine gas, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, we think that it's the same thing. They are two things together. But remember, the inside of this, when you open it, 
the what called the configuration of this thing is totally different. Eh? They are single bond, double bond, and triple bond. The reason, the octet rule. Eh? Next. So this is methane, eh? carbon H4. So normally when in the same idea, carbon have four valence electron. And because of that, they need four. That's why the maximum carbon can make is four. If you see carbon and then there are five bond, that's wrong. Lah. It's beyond all that. Lah. So you need four things. So the one way, one way, eh, because, because carbon can also uh, combine with the hydrogen and so on, whatever. So, so here, carbon need four another electron. And hydrogen, we know hydrogen only have one valence electron. So you can combine together and then you can get like this and the carbon at the end you have uh, eight valence electrons or that satisfied. So when you draw the skeletal normally in the organic chemistry, when you have nothing here, this is denote carbon. Eh? Okay. So any this thing that's carbon. Okay. So that is basically uh, uh, the covalent bond. Lah. Okay, what else? Okay, so the bond strength, eh? you see here they are single, double, triple. The strength is increasing as the bond uh, numbers increase. As the strength increase as the bond order increase, meaning that single bond roughly have 300 kilojoule per mole in order to break it up. So double bond have double, more or less like double like that, and so on. So the bond strength increase as the number of bond increase, while the bond distance decrease, meaning that this is shorter. Eh? If you can calculate, I mean, they can calculate. This and two, the bond is shorter than this. Like this, huh? and it's like uh, more stronger attracted. Okay, so this is shorter than this, this is shorter than this. But this is stronger than this, this is stronger than this. So that's what does it mean by here. Lah. Bond distance, just the different, the distance between this and this. Lah. Okay, energy release to make bond. In order to make bond like this, energy is released. Huh? Energy is released in order to make bond. Energy required to break bond. Lah. To break this, Energy is required. Lah. That's why it's very hard to break a covalent bond. Okay? You need to heat it and so on. Then only then it will break. Lah. Okay? Covalent bond typically form between atoms which have small difference in electronegativities. For example, lah, before this we talked about sodium chloride which is ionic bond. Now this hydrogen chloride, more or less the same thing but this is different. Lah. This is covalent. Uh, acid hydrochloric is uh, covalent. This one, this ionic, the one that we learned before. If you look at here, table of electronegativity, if I go to a table of electronegativity, you can see there the difference. So, sodium chloride just now, if uh, those at the back cannot see, so sodium here is basically 0 0.93, the number of electronegativity. This I sort of like, I click the electronegativity part. Lah. So, being that they just show visually. The darker is meaning that the higher electronegativity. Electronegativity, electronegativity is basically the ability to attract the uh, electron lah. So here is a thief uh, that they can steal the electron much stronger than this lah. So if you look here, even though it is far, and the Cl also is far, but see the color. So if you look at the edge here, if you cannot see, I can say this is two point two, two point two. Cl is 3.16, okay? So let me put here, uh, ash is 2.2, uh, Cl is uh, 3.16. The difference is, uh, 3 by, calculate. While I say this thing, okay, the other one that just now is sodium, sodium, and A is basically, uh, and A is 0 0.93, 0 0.93. So HCl, the difference, in terms of electron negativity is about what? 0 0.96. Okay. This, the NACL, the different, NACL, the different bit is around 3, right? 3 plus, right? So you can see, because of this, have short of like, the different in electron negativity is not much that they share. Okay. They say that, okay, better share lah. But for this sodium, and the Cl, even though the sodium at the first group and the Cl also at the seventh group is far, same far than hydrogen, but the difference in electronegativity is less. It is higher than uh, H with the Cl compared to uh, yeah the N to Cl. The difference is much higher than H to Cl. Lah. 
So you, they give numbers, huh? there are numbers here. If you cannot see later on when you go back to a hostel, you can just open this PT table, huh? PT table, and then you can just play around this thing. Okay? So that is the uh, what is this thing? Okay. So we go a little bit about covalent bond because this is the bond that you will sort of like uh, play again and again during this uh, your studies. Lah. So covalent bond. What does it mean by sharing electron? Sharing electron means sharing orbital. Eh? Remember, electron is not like a hard ball like that. Because we cannot really decide where is the momentum and also location for the electron. So basically, we talk about orbital. Okay? So sharing electron means sharing orbital. Sharing orbital means that the orbital mix. Okay? And this is what we call hybridization. Eh? Hybridization. So when you see the carbon and then this 4 ash combined together with the covalent bond, this is basically the overlapping of the orbital. Mixing of the orbital, so that we call hybridization. I believe most of you who are in the metric, come from metric, also learn this right, hybridization. Okay. You learn about the sp3 and so on, right? Yes. If I ask you, explain this based on the sp3, can you come and... What does it mean by sp3? No. No. Charity, do, uh, I mean, do you learn this? In CGSE, or I, I don't know, you take O level. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so basically the sp3, what does it mean by sp3? They are orbital, okay? We learned before they are s orbital, they are p orbital, they are d orbital, they are f orbital, right? Okay, this sp orbital means that the s combined with the p, lah. s combined with the 3p. Okay, okay the re how they do it is like this. This is for carbon, eh? ground state for the carbon. Okay, carbon have what we call carbon have six valence electron, eh? six valence electron. So this ground state is for the valence part, lah, the valence part. If you look here, the carbon, they will feel the what we call uh, the the. Uh, this is not for valence. This is for the all electron, lah. So mean that carbon have six, six what we call the carbon is here. So if you look carbon, you have two inside, and then you have four outside. Okay. So the inside here, this is S orbital. Orbital. The one is the outside here is a P uh, SP orbital. Orbital. So S orbital here is basically like a sphere, right? So the lower the number of the uh, what I call the orbital, like one S, two S here, because we have learned about this before. Eh? One S is smaller than two S, and so on. So one S. Uh, because this S orbital, they can, as I said before, the any orbital can fill max of two, uh, what I call two electrons. This is Pauli exclusion rule. Lah. And then, because the carbon, because we talk about here, because carbon have what we call six electrons all together, so they fill the one S orbital first. So this one, this is one S. This is one S. They fill the thing, so that is done. Lah. Done. And then the four orbital here, the four orbital here, they start with the 2s here. 2s. 1s and then 2s. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What does it mean here? I mean, I can show you here. It's not clear. I'm not sure whether you can see or not here, but let's go to electron and then go to carbon. Okay? Look here. Okay. Oh, let me go. How to go? Uh, so this is how to make it bigger. Okay, so this thing, carbon. So look here. If I go from to carbon, carbon is number six. Carbon is number six. But in order to uh, do the electron configuration, you do like this. You can see here the s orbital is lower than the p orbital, meaning that p is uh, have higher energy orbital than s, and then d like that, and so on. So you can see after s is filled, for example, the s is uh, helium, and then you go to number two. They fill the first S orbital, so you can see the sphere is become bigger. And then you go to the boron, you go to the lithium, lithium, uh, lithium, okay, lithium. So now the two S is filled, and then the what we call the what we call the the beryllium is filled, and then now uh, boron, they fill two P, and then carbon they fill again lah. So that's why this is the energy uh, level for the carbon. So if you look uh, at this, what you call? So if you look here, 
this is what I draw here. Lah. It's basically just same like before. So this is ground state. Ground state is mean that where the carbon is neutral. Lah. Nothing happened. Carbon is alone like that. So this like this. They are happy. So they are, you can see here, they are for P, they are like so, they are one orbital, they are not filled at all. Okay, what happened during hybridization is that this one electron from here will move to P orbital. They are excited. Uh, they are excited, they move there. They move there. Okay, because uh, they need to fill in this one because according to the hard rule, eh, we learned before, because uh, this hard rule said that. Um, you need to fill in one first, singly first, before you double up. Okay, that's why this one goes to this number third. Okay, so that excited state. Okay, but then what happened during hybridization? This thing combined. These two things combined. This thing two two thing combined. So this two p and two s. The combination is sp three lah. Sp three s one s and that three p orbital. But if you look here, you look here the level, energy level. So the P is here. If I can draw from here to here, from here. The S is here, from here to here. So 2SP3, the hybrid, is the energy level is in between. That's why it's not on P, it's not on S. It's a new thing. It's not, it's not, uh, it's just a new thing, hybrid. It's a new thing. That's why in the middle here, in the middle here. Okay, so to show you how uh, it look, it's like this. In ground state, you have only one S. So this is basically two S lah, two S, uh, one S and two S. That's why it's uh, like a ball, like a sphere. And then two P is like this. We know two P, they have like one, two, three. They are P, X, P, Y, P, Z. Okay, like a, a dumbbell. When you hybrid, what happen? It become like this. It become, it just this combined with this. Okay, combine like that. Combine like this. So this is not normal. Eh? Normally, the P orbital is like this. So this is not normal. Okay, that's why they are have their own energy level in between P and S. Okay? So this thing, they will sort of like uh, rearrange themselves in such a way like this tetrahedral formation. Eh? This tetrahedral formation. So normally you can see something like this, right? Okay? So when you learn in the organic chemistry, in the organic chemistry class, normally you learn carbon is like this. You draw in your exam like this. But in, this is 2D eh, to make your life easier. But in reality, because of this orbital thingy, they need to have what we call uh, the maximum, uh, people say the steric hindrance. So this, they have angle here. In 3D, it's like this. The, what we call this thing, the angle between here and here is 109.5 degree. Eh? Okay. So the angle between this tetrahedral, this is, the name is tetra. Tetrahedral formation. Eh? So the angle between this bond and this bond is 109.5 degree. Okay? So that's the reason why when you see uh, any 3D image for methane, it's like this. Okay? It's not like that. Okay? In 3D, it's like this because of this. They try to find the maximum, uh, the, the, what we call it, they try to get as far as possible than other, other bond. Lah. So that is the thing. So that is sp3. Example of sp3 is methane lah. So this thing, methane. Okay. So now sp2. You have also learned sp2. Sp2, ethane. Example, ethane, benzene, and graphene. So the sp2 is more or less the same. Huh? The the idea is more or less the same. The ground state for carbon. Let's say we take uh, ethane. Huh? The ground state is like this. The excited state is like this also for sp2. Huh? But the hybridization state. We become like this. Okay, this thing, uh, forget about this because now this goes to this. Huh? I want to talk about the sp2. So now, when they want to combine, merge together, what happens is that this thing goes merge with the p, but then uh, this one will detach and goes, uh, they, they will stay at p, that's why they will stay at p, but the merging happens only with the two orbital. So what does it mean? There are only three orbital, uh, three this, this, they left one p orbital unhybridized, unhybridized, uh, like that. So this, normally, uh, they, they want to together, but 
for SP, this one left unhybridized, whatever the thing. Okay, so that's why here, the difference here is this only unhybridization state. Eh? So you can see that's why this is what we call SP2. SP2 because they are 2p orbital, 1s orbital. 2p orbital, 1s orbital merged together. Another p orbital is not hybridized. Okay? So, so meaning that here inside this, you have only 1, 2, 3. This one, 1, 2, 3 is hybridized. Hybridized means merged. That's why they change the shape. And then 1 is not merged. It's just like normal. Okay? So this is basically uh, what we call uh, SP2, uh, SP2. SP2. So example is 18 like this. Uh, 18. I will talk about uh, later on why this happened like this. Uh, why they are double bond. Because I want to show uh, uh, this thing first. Uh. Okay. So and then you have SP do, do yourself. Uh. Acetylene. Uh, this is triple bond. Uh. Okay. So this you do yourself. Uh, so uh, before I explain about this, how this occur, how this, uh, how they get this shape, let's see this first. Type of orbital overlapping. They are pi bond. They are uh, sigma bond. They are pi bond. Sigma bond is basically end to end bonding. For example, uh, let's say you have something like this, something like this, something like this, uh, and then you have something like this. You combine. So you got like this, end to end. Side by side, it's like this. Huh? You have this P orbital. Another P orbital. Combine. So you get, ah, uh, You have something like this. So side by side. Okay. So this is basically what we call this is uh, sigma bond or, yeah, sigma bond. So this is pi bond. Pi bond. Okay. Pi or sigma is just to show that how the orbital overlap. So that is sigma, this is pi bond. Okay, so when you see single bond, that's basically pi bond only. For example, this pi uh, and sigma bond only. So this is sigma bond only. Because this, this thing, if there are hydrogen here, because this hydrogen, right? Hydrogen just go here. Lah. Hydrogen just, just go here, go here, go here. That's why end to end. There are sphere of hydrogen combined with this. That's why you get end to end. For double bond, you have one pi and one uh, sigma, triple bond, you have one pi, two sigma. Okay, let me talk about it. Why double bond have this thing? Okay, so look here. Okay, so if let's say you see that thing, uh, for 18, 18, you see something like this. Huh? Ash, 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 ash. This is 18, huh? 18. Okay, if you look at the picture there over the hujung sana tu, saya tak bawa begitu, hujung sana tu, the, the 3D picture, you can see it's like a plana. It's like a plane. Meaning that, if I draw 3D, this is C. Eh? So C, because 18, as I show there, they are what we call SP2 hybridized. Meaning that you have something like this. Something like this. Something like that. Something like this. Okay. No. So, uh, see, like this. And then you have another C here because there are two C. And both C is SP2. Eh? SP2. Okay, so this C also like this. Combine. 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 So, imagine this. You look it from this. Uh, yeah. from this from this side. So, imagine this. It's like this. It's like on plane. Lah, on plane. Macam mana nak terangkan? Bukan 3D ya. So it's basically in one plane, ha, like this. Ha, in one plane, on the paper like that. It's like one plane. There are no something that's up or down. Okay. So this is you know SP2, eh? SP2 because this carbon there, there are three of this, three SP2. So but now you need to remember for 18 here there are one uh, unhybridized, unhybridized p orbital. So that one thing is basically they are sort of like they are coming out like this. Okay? Meaning that this is like vertically. This is vertical. Lah. This I draw 3D 3D. Hmm, 3D pun. Okay. So this also because they are one unhybridized thing, 
They are something like this and then this is at the back. Nampak tak? Nampak tak? Boleh eh? Boleh imagine eh? Okay. So you see here, this and this is basically pi. Eh, sigma, sigma. Sigma. Okay, now you have this unhybridized thing. Okay, so they are combined lah. They combine. Banyak combine. Ha, they combine lah. They combine. They combine. They combine. Side by side. Side by side. And we know that side by side is basically the pi. This is basically one thing lah. Side by side this. As I said before, the side by side here, you have this and then you have this thing. So this is pi bond. Okay. So you have pi bond here. So th that's why double, so this, that's why you get double bond there. So double bond, you have one pi, one sigma plus one pi. So that's why you get the 18 structure like that. Okay. Okay. But for the 18, uh, for the 18, this thing, the difference between this is 120 degree. This and this is 120 degree. And this and this is basically 120 degree in term of like we call the angle, the bond angle. That's why when people draw, people use this 3D molecular model, this thing, there are certain angle here. The certain angle here. Okay. So that's the best. Understand or not? Yes. Arina, my Arina, Pam. Pam. Tanamba. Because this thing is one thing. This thing side by side because this is one orbital this this thing okay why pi only one is because this is one thing this is one orbital combined together you get this thing this thing is one thing it's one what about one thing one one one, one process <laughs> it's not like so this one thing so this is pi lah pi even though it's look there are two, but the process is one. So that's why only one pi. That's why one pi. One sigma. Sigma, you know lah, this, this thing. So that's why they draw something like that. The reason for this is that they want to explain to you why double bond happen. Why this thing happen and so on. Okay? So, okay. Enough for this lah. Okay. So that's the thing. So the question. How many hybrid orbital in benzene? You know benzene? Amani, you know benzene? Have heard benzene? Can you draw the structure of benzene? Like what? Like a lagon? Benzene. Uh, no, that, that, that's hex, uh, that is octagon. No, no, it's hex. It's hexagon. It's hexagon. It's hexagon. Yeah. Ah, that has a lot. Okay, so I go here. Okay, so now the question. Okay, this is the bonus mark. Tell me how many hybrid orbital in benzene? How many hybrid orbital in benzene? How many? How many? Benzene is like this, huh? Benzene is like this. This is benzene. One, two, three. How many hybrid orbital in this in this uh, thing? This is benzene, ah? Huh? Ah? Huh? Siapa? Siapa? Ila. Siapa? Ila. Siapa six? Siapa kata six? Angkat tangan, angkat. Ah, six, six tuan. Tuan hari kita. Ila six. But then tuan S P tuan. Six six. Six. But then, yes, I just I ask you how many hari kita. But then I want to ask you further question. SP2. SP2. Okay. Uh, this is not right lah. I mean, yeah, that, that's right, but it's not fully answer this thing lah. Yeah, the answer is uh, 18 lah. Eh? Okay, siapa? Share ID lah. Eh? Share ID 1. Okay. So basically, there are 18 lah. Eh? 18 hybrid orbital. The reason for that, okay. The reason for that, yes, this is SP2. Yes, this is SP2. SP2. But doesn't get much because I ask how many. Eh? So the SP2, what does it mean by SP2? You have one, you have like uh, this ash, this is another CC. So this one, SP2 like the benzene. You need to understand how many hybrid. Uh, so the hybrid here, as you can see here, one carbon have three. One, two, three. 
one, two, three. There are three hybrid orbital. One, two, three. So there are for each carbon, there are six. Six hybrid. Hybrid orbital, hybrid, combined, hybrid, one, two, three. One, two, three, right? And then you have one, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So time. Eh, there are three for times six lah. So you get 18. Six carbon and for hybrid, hybrid, orbital, orbital for each carbon, for each carbon. So there are three hybrid orbital for each carbon. There are, but, and also there are six carbon. So six times three, there are 18 lah. Okay tak? Okay. One carbon, they have three like that. This one carbon. There are three, these three hybrid orbital, the hijau, the color green, the green one is hybrid. They are straight in shape. Normal shape is like this. But hybrid become like this. So that's why it is, one, two, three. And in benzene, there are six carbon. So you have six times three, there are 18. So that is charity. So, charity, yeah? Okay, so next. Uh, so that is basically the, what we call, uh, the ni lah. So metallic bond. So that is uh, uh, what we call the bond, the bonding of covalent. Eh? The thing that you will see again and again. Metallic bond. So metallic bond form when the valence electron are not associated with a particular atom and ion. Okay, mean that the valence electron free. They are free. So for example, like this. Let's say this is a one. Uh, what is this? What we call? So we are under metallic bond. Eh? So what? What do you think this? Uh, this apa tu? This thing. Huh? You have two valence, two two electron and outside. What do you think this thing? Helium. Helium? Yeah. That's not right. Because remember, we are in metallic bond. Helium is gas. So basically, I don't say this is the orbital. I just say that it's the valence electron. There are two valence electron. It might, they must be there too. Because metallic bond, the word itself metal, right? So helium is gas. So this is just to show you that I, I don't say that this thing is like what we call, I say just now, this valence uh, electron is not like the only thing. Eh? There might be the more thing. To, okay, so any metallic, lah, any metallic with the two valence electrons can be, lah, for example, magnesium, that can be. Lah. Okay, so in a metallic bond, what happens is that this thing, uh, okay, uh, so you can see the electron here at the beginning they are stick to one atom in a metallic bond they just travel here and there in moving around moving around here and there okay moving around here and there so they are no like uh, what we call the electron uh, tak duduk diam eh? they jalan jalan okay so you can see here because the electron can move away from the what we call from the uh, atom itself so the atom become ion so metallic is quite unique because inside the metal you have ion because in order for this electron to move around it will detach from this when you have something let's say magnesium is uh, deficient in electron that magnesium atom become the nucleus the proton it become what we call net positive charge lah because less electron so in metal what inside metal is the ion okay so you have all this uh, electron moving around Okay, moving around here and there. Oh, tak ada. Oh, okay, nah, okay, can work. Oh, nak buat tak? What is the thing? Okay, so you can see ya. This what we call electron C model lah, because the electron doesn't fix to any particular atom. So it just move around uh, here and there, uh, here and there lah. So you can see whatever uh, the nucleus become ion core because the uh, electron goes away lah. And this because the electron move around like a C, so we call it C of valence electron lah. C of valence electron. The most important thing about this electron C border is that the number of electron must match with the number of the uh, the what we call the ion, the positive ion here. For example, here, because at the beginning here, this atom, one atom here, have two valence electron. 
Okay. Now I have one, two, three, four, five. Five times four is twenty. Okay, twenty that twenty things, and then twenty times two you have forty. So if you calculate it out, one, two, three, four, five, six, until you get forty. So that's important the magnitude because if not your metal is not neutral lah. It become electrostatic whatever the thing. So that's why let's say I ask you, if let's say you have three, uh, three aluminium atom. Let's say you have three aluminium. And then you make a metal. And then if let's say I ask you draw a, what we call draw a electron C model, electron C model. So how you do this? You need to know aluminium is what aluminium. If you look at the what we call, so you can see aluminium here. Aluminium where is aluminium? Blah 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 here. You can see there are three valence electron. So basically, so you have in one in one aluminium the aluminium you have valence electron. One, two, three. They are valent electrons. So meaning that if this aluminium become ion, the aluminium plus you they release three electrons. So the electron C model for this is basically you have because I said three aluminium. So you are you just draw Al, 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 put put put, and also you put the the this lah because it become this three plus lah, three plus three plus three plus, and then you have three times three. They are nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is electron C model for a metal that has three aluminium atom. So the most important thing, as I said, the number, the number of the ion must same lah because if not, it will not be neutral. So okay or not this? Okay. Are you now okay? Okay. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, so that is a uh, electron C, uh, well, C of valent well electron. So delocalized. So we also have name for this electron. Electron can move around, tra travel like that. We call it delocalized because this electron can move. That's why they can conduct electricity because electricity is about electron moving, right? So that's why metal can conduct electricity. Anything metal can conduct electricity because inside the metal, the electron are free. They are not attached to any particular individual atom. That's the reason why they can conduct electricity and also heat lah, better than others lah. Okay, so polymer like this, like this cannot conduct electricity because it's just share. So there are no the electron is share in the orbit. So there are no free electron moving around. So there are no electricity lah. They can you cannot conduct electricity because electricity is just simply electron moving here or from here to there. That's why metallic. All metallic compound can conduct electricity lah at some degree lah. Some conduct better than other, but at least they can conduct electricity. Okay, so okay, so now we learn about the secondary bonding ah. Secondary bonding. So what we learn just now, ionic, covalent, and metallic is basically primary bonding. The bonding that happen because the electron move around. Okay, now we talk about secondary bonding. Bonding that happen physically means that there are no transfer of electron. Example is von der Waals. Von der Waals. So normally we have a lot of name, but every all the secondary bonding they can group together in what we call von der Waals. We call also intermolecular bonding or physical bonding. Okay, the first. Have you ever see this thing? Cica, lizard or gecko lah or gecko. In the North America or in the West, they have like a bigger thing. They call it gecko, ah, gecko. So when scientists study gecko, gecko or cicak, they found that this hand, their their feet, they don't have any sort of like scale. They don't have scale. I mean, si 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 si. They don't have scale or whatever something that can make the oh kotor dia ni. Make make the what call the gecko stick or by friction. So scientists doesn't find that thing scale. Scientists also doesn't find any gland, gland, gland apa dalam bahasa Melayu? Gland, gland, oil gland, gland, G L A N D glands. Meaning that if you have a gland, you can secrete the oil or whatever lah, secrete a glue. If you look a snail, snail, if you look snail, if you look snail, 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 they have, they have what we call they have like a glue right. When the snail go up, they have a glue. So snail have the Oil gland, they secrete the gland that have like glues, glue apa, glue properties lah. But when they find a gecko, when they look at gecko, nothing, 
They just dry, no oil gland, no like a tiny sort of like uh, hook allow them to do. So it's like a dry thing, like a dry, like our hand lah, like our hand. Okay. Uh, so now uh, the idea is that even though something like our hand, let's say this our hand and uh, this board is neutral, they are no like uh, attraction. Remember, all the electron, all the atom inside you or whatever there, even the neutral atom, they have electron. Oh, they cannot do that. They don't have what we call, they have electron. An electron, even in the neutral compound, they always move around. Okay, move around. So at certain point, at instantaneous point, one millisecond, one nanosecond, picosecond, this electron, maybe there are a lot more electron here than here. There are more electrons here than here. So at certain point, this, what we call, even in a neutral atom, one positive, one negative, they are sort of like fluctuation in, in terms of where the electron move, where the electron will be. Okay? So at certain point, the electron can go like, they can sort of like gather around here. Okay? And when you have something like this, this is what we call induced dipole. Eh? So mean that at the beginning, dipole means that two polarity, lah, two different polarity, uh, minus and positive. So normally they are normal like this, they are no dipole, they are no polarity But then this is induced because of the electron can move whizzing around the uh, nucleus And then it can be gathering somewhere more than others at a certain time So that's you get induced dipole And then this induced dipole, they, uh, they meet another neutral atom So this negative, they will sort of like, like magnet, it will attract lah. So they will induce this thing, they will induce this thing So this because negative and positive sort of like want to attract together so that's why they be like this lah. and then the attraction between these two we call it uh, one the world's bond lah. so this uh, the name for this is induced fluctuating induced dipole induced dipole attraction or in other words ladder dispersion lah. so basically fluctuating because sekejap je it's happened very quick and then it's gone because it just moves like that and then they have like attraction and then no attraction Attraction, no attraction. Okay, in gecko, that thing happen lah. That thing happen. The reason why gecko can stick is because they are a lot. They have a lot of tiny, tiny, what we call tiny, tiny hair that make a perfect contact to the what we call to the wall. And even though the hair is and the wall is neutral, because of this fluctuating in this dipole, in this dipole, the attraction is strong enough for them to sort of like stick. Okay, so that is in this dipole, in this dipole. Okay. Uh, they are also permanent dipole in this dipole attraction we call it dipole force so if you look here when you see the hydrochloric acid lah, we know uh, chlorine is more electron negative than hydrogen so this is where uh, when the more electron is more gathered to the chlorine so we call this partial positive partial negative what does it mean here is that there are more electron gathered here in the chlorine than the uh, hydrogen this is what we call permanent dipole Okay, permanent dipole mean that the thing permanent lah. Okay, and then this thing meet the neutral atom, and then because of this, they are partial negative. They are like dipole here, so it sort of like induce this thing. Permanent dipole induce dipole, so you get this thing. One of bond also lah, but there is under this permanent dipole induce dipole attraction. We call it dipole force and dipole force. And the last is this permanent dipole permanent dipole attraction. For example, the case of so, for example, water, H2O, H2O. H2O is basically, uh, uh, okay, look here lah. So, SCL. So, CL is more electron negative than uh, hydrogen. So, that's why more, more electron will be gathered here. So, because of this and another SCL, so it will orient it, uh, itself in such a way that negative and positive sort of like attract together. So, this attraction is called Wonder Wolf Force lah. We, we, we sort of like, we classify it under Wonder Wolf Force. And then this is permanent dipole, permanent dipole attraction. So in sort of like in water, there are special name for that. And the permanent dipole, permanent dipole, we call it when the hydrogen attracted to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, we call it uh, hydrogen bonding. Okay. So in terms of strength, the caseum, this one, is stronger than Dubai and stronger than London. Okay. So that's the idea. So in real life, in real life, when you see in real life, in real material, there are mixture of two or more bonding. This in real material. So you can see there, here, let's say you put the covalent bonding at the top, ionic here, wall here, metallic here. So this is what we call 
bonding tetrahedral lah just to show you that they are all four bonding lah. So in real life, thing in the mixture, for example ceramic, they are mostly ionic, but there are some covalent. Okay, for polymers, they are covalent and also some ionic, uh, some ionic properties lah. So in real life, they are what we call they are a mixture of two and more bonding. I think that's it for today about the bonding. Thank you.